When I decided to do a video on this topic, I found that most people menu plan on either a weekly or monthly basis. I don't do that. Mostly because in the past when I've tried to do this, I end up either forgetting to do it or just not motivated to do it every single week, looking up recipes. So here is my system that works for me and saves me time and money. The first half of this video will be on how I menu plan and the second half will be on how I do my grocery shopping. So let's go. I do four main menu planning sessions a year based on the seasons and then each menu repeats fortnightly during that season. I base this idea on noticing what a lot of restaurants do. They have a set number of items on their menu that they stick with and they only usually change it up if they do change it up at all. They only ever usually change it up seasonally. It's also likely that when they do change the menu, they keep the things that are the best selling or the most well liked and they'll swap out things that are not as well liked and they'll swap out things that are not in season for things that are in season. So in short, they keep a very strict tight menu. So I kind of adopted this and keeping a strict type menu is really good for a number of reasons. One is that you're going to get very good at the particular type of recipes that you're making over and over. Two is that by keeping your menu tight, you won't be buying a hundred different ingredients for a meal that you only probably make once. If you've ever bought a spice or a sauce for a particular recipe and then you've used it for that recipe, but then it's just sat in your pantry or your fridge forever and you've never used it again, you'll know what I mean. Restaurants have very little food wastage in prep. Now they do have food wastage when customers send back meals that they don't eat, but in the actual cooking and preparation part, they have very little wastage. So that should be our goal too. And three, the other reason I like a tight menu is that you tend to use up what you have on hand before you have to repurchase. So instead of things just sitting in the pantry for months, you will be using them on a regular basis, which keeps them fresh and saves you money. So as I said, we have a fortnightly rotating menu for our dinners. Now I don't usually add lunch or breakfast to this, mostly because we tend to have the same things over and over again for breakfast and lunch is usually just either leftovers or sandwiches or something very simple. So it's just not worth making a plan for that. Now here is the reason I do a fortnightly rotating menu. The first is that we really don't need as much variety as we think we do. Truthfully, most people just like a handful of meals that become their go-tos that they tend to eat over and over. Now this is especially true with kids, especially mine. They like what they like and they don't want to try new things. But even with me, I find that I have my favorites that I like to have over and over again. But I still don't want to have my favorites every single night. So a fortnightly rotation, so having that meal come up once every fortnight night is just enough for me to enjoy a variety of foods but still keep my favorites. The second reason I like a fortnightly rotating menu is that coming up with more than 14 recipes when you're trying to meal plan can be exhausting. Have you ever gone through a recipe website and had all of these great expectations on how you're going to have a month of brand new dinners and you get to like the first or second week and you're like, uh, I just want to eat a particular meal or I just can't be bothered cooking anything new tonight. So why fight it? Stick with the recipes that you like and have them on a regular basis. That doesn't mean you can't experiment occasionally, but it does mean that you'll be making meals that you're more likely to want to make. And number three, I have better things to do than plan meals all of the time. So 14 recipes once each season is just enough for me. There's still room for flexibility, but I'm not continuously making a new recipe or a new meal plan every single. So the main point of a meal plan is so that you know what you're having for dinner and you don't have to think about it. You're more likely to cook if you have a plan and you have the ingredients and food so you know what you're making each night. Now, as I mentioned, meal plans can be as simple or as detailed as you like. You can either list out everything that you need in full detail, or you can be a little bit more general. I tend to lean on the flexible side, simply because it's easier to substitute or swap out a cut of meat or a type of vegetable based on what's in season or based on what you find at the grocery store on sale or just what looks good that week. So that means you have a basic idea of what you're cooking, you're just mixing up the sides or the flavorings based on what you've bought that week. Now you can have themes if you like, such as Meatless Monday or Chicken Friday or whatever works for your schedule. As a general rule, in summer we tend to have a protein and a salad, whereas in winter we have more baked and more hearty meals. So here's an example of this week's menu, which is gonna repeat again in two weeks. As you can see, it's very simple and it does leave a lot of room for flexibility. Now here's an example of what I mean by flexible. So last night's dinner was listed as chicken and salad. So in my plan, that's all I've written, chicken and salad. It doesn't get more simple than that. But when preparing it, I tend to add different herbs or flavorings or whatever I have on hand and based on how I feel. 
So for last night's chicken, I marinated it in oil and garlic and a tiny bit of chili, and I also added breadcrumbs. So I don't always do that. Sometimes the chicken is prepared differently. It just depends on what I have in the pantry. So in summer, we are always having chicken and salad every second Monday, but how I prepare it might vary. And the same goes with the salad or whatever side. The type of salad that I make is usually just dependent on what vegetables look good or what salad ingredients look good that week. I tend to stick with the absolute basics like lettuce, tomato, cucumber, and things like that only because they're usually the cheapest. And of course, they're the ones that my kids tend to like the most anyway. So last night I added some feta cheese simply because I had some and I wanted to use it up. The kids picked it out, but I liked it. So next fortnight will be different. I might add carrots, I might add nuts, I might add slices of mango, whatever I feel like or what I've bought for that week. So even though my fortnightly menus repeat every two weeks during that season, there is still room for variations and changing things up just slightly. But the changes are small and not enough that I want to go and search out new recipes. They're just experimenting and just adding new things and just trying to make it more interesting. So therefore I know what I'm cooking, I have all of the base ingredients, I don't have to think about it and I can just make it and if I'm feeling inspired to add something different I can, if not I'll just keep it simple. So here's some action steps that you can do. So go through and make a basic list of all of the types of recipes or types of meals that you and your family enjoy and just make a list of the favorites and then start to put them into a meal plan. You could do this weekly or fortnightly like I do it or whatever works for you. There are no right or wrong ways to do this. Now again, it can be as detailed or as flexible as you like. I tend to keep it flexible because it's just easier for me. But if you are one of these people that likes to have everything written down, do that. And of course, it doesn't have to be set in stone. You can be making changes if you don't particularly like something or if you find a better way of doing something. Like, again, no rules, just do what works for you. And of course, basing your meal plan around the seasons means that you probably will save money in the long run because you're buying things that are in season but are usually cheaper at that time and are usually fresher and healthier as well. Grocery shopping. Okay, so let's move on to the grocery store. So I try to shop only once a week. Now sure there's going to be weeks that I pop in more than once because I've forgotten something or I just need to get something but I try not to do that because I always spend more money when I tend to go in. I don't know why that is even if I have a set list and don't tend to vary I always seem to get tempted with something else. So for that reason I try and avoid going to the grocery store more than once a week because it's just too tempting. So that's why I like to be flexible too. So if I don't have a particular ingredient for that night, as long as it's not a base ingredient, then I'll just substitute something else for what I already have. Shopping less means spending less. Now I like to do online shopping for groceries, mostly because I just find it easier and more convenient. And in the long run, it ends up saving me money anyway, because I only tend to buy what's on my list if I'm doing online shopping. Whereas when I go into the store, I tend to like to browse the aisles to see what new foods are there or what's on sale that I hadn't thought of. and. I just seem to save more money when I do online shopping. But of course, before you go shopping, whether it's in store or online, you're going to need a list. Now, since my menu only varies seasonally and I'm on a fortnightly rotation, that means I'm using the same list over and over again. I'm not making a new list each week. So this is gonna save me some time. I usually have a checklist on my phone. Sometimes I'll use the Notes app to make a checklist, although I also have lists set up in my online shopping store as well. So I can just tick off things and add them to my cart really quickly. So it takes no time to shop now. What I often do also is at the start of the month, I tend to stock up more on pantry items and non-perishable items then. And then for the rest of the weeks of that month, I'm usually just buying fresh produce then because I already have the base ingredients that I stocked up at the start of the month. And sometimes I even like to challenge myself. So at the start of the month is obviously going to be the biggest shop. And then each week I try and make it smaller each time. Eh, I just like making games for myself sometimes. Now when you're in store, make it a point to always look at the unit pricing rather than the ticket pricing. You're going to save money if you can quickly look and see which is the best value and sometimes the ticket price can be a little bit misleading. And here's an example. So in my local supermarket, for the green beans, they have three different types that I can get. Two are in bags and one is loose. So these conveniently packaged beans are obviously more expensive and I actually don't think they're all that convenient anyway. I mean, how hard is it to put beans in a bag yourself? So as you can see from this, the loose green beans were $5.90 a kilo, whereas the top pre-bagged beans were $14.12 a kilo, which 
first at first glance may have looked cheaper because the ticket price says that it was 480 but if you then actually look at that that 480 was only for 380 grams of beans not a kilo so you're actually going to save money if you can bag it yourself and why not i mean it's just grabbing a handful and putting it in a bag and you're going to save nearly ten dollars a kilo <laughs> So make a base list of all the foods that you're going to need for your fortnightly or whatever meal plan that you've decided to make because you're using the same list over and over again and just checking off what you need. You don't have to keep making lists, at least not until next season anyway. Decide whether you're going to use a notes app or if you're going to use lists in your online shopping store, whatever works for you. And of course, don't forget to keep an eye out on unit pricing because you can save so much money just by not buying prepackaged foods. You don't want to pay more than you have to. And I actually find buying it loose is fresher and healthier anyway. So what else? Before I wrap up, here's some more tips that might help when planning your own meal plan. So if you don't like cooking, and I'm not a person that really likes cooking that much, then when you're making something, if you can use that for another recipe, just sort of make a bit extra so that you don't have to do it next time you've already made it, and then you can either put it in the fridge or the freezer. For example, you might be able to pre-chop all the vegetables for a few nights dinner, or you might be able to cook the meat or whatever you're having um, in bulk and then just, again, put it in the fridge or freezer, depending on when you're going to have it again. Then you can simply reheat if you don't feel like cooking because dinner's done and you can just go and have a glass of wine instead or not. So anything you can do beforehand is going to save you time and just make it less stressful. And if you already have everything there, you're more likely to make it or just go and reheat it rather than dial up and get something unhealthy. Okay, so that's how I meal plan and grocery shop. So each new season, I go and make a new fortnightly meal plan that rotates until that season is over. It's flexible, so while I'll have the base meal, I'll be able to change flavorings or sides depending on what's in season or what looks good or what's on sale. It's simple and easy to plan for, it saves me time, it saves me money, and it just works for me. I hope you found my system useful and it's helped you with coming up with ideas for your own meal plan, whether you use the whole system that I have or you use part of it or none of it. Again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this, it's just what works best for you and this is what works best for me. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Have a great week and take care. Bye.